So today, hopefully, I uh, will be able to encourage you from the Word of God. You know, uh, dads or fathers, we have this uh, awesome, amazing, or tremendous calling um, ahead of us. But, and I know there are a lot of missing fathers nowadays. And the hearts of the fathers are, instead of turning toward their children, turning away from their children. But the Bible says uh, in Malachi that God will turn the hearts of the fathers toward their children in these last days. So we need to listen with an open heart. Okay? So that's our task involve, uh, involves uh, changing not only our own perspectives of fatherhood, but also those of our children, especially our sons and daughters. So it's very important uh, that we need to get into the Word of God and see and find out what the Word of God has to say and how to be a good father. Okay? So we have to communicate to our children the standards of the Word of God, principles of the Word of God, so that the trend uh, will be reversed. The trend of the being a uh, father's le fatherless generation will be reversed, and we need to discover and put into practice what the Word of God is saying, what we are hearing, what we are meditating about fathers and being a father, so we can teach our uh, children with these principles that we are learning from God. You know, the Word of God has been very specific about the responsibilities or our responsibilities as dads and fathers. And this role or particular role is so important to our Heavenly Father because fathers are meant to represent our God to our children. What an awesome uh, privilege, Nepo. We need to represent God to our children. So when we fail to show His love and character to our family, to our sons and daughters, our children's concept of God suffers and it affects their relationship with other people and it affects their relationship especially with God. Well, so no earthly father, actually, our, I mean, us earthly fathers are not perfect. Marami po tayong mga mistakes na nagagawa. Yet God provided a wealth of instruction in the Word of God on parenting and when we look to Him, we can fulfill our responsibilities as dads and be meaningful reflections of the fatherhood of God to our children. So today I would like to share a few points about what it means to be a good father. What it means to be a good father. So a few responsibilities of being a dad. A good father knows his heavenly father. A good father knows his heavenly father, and he represents his heavenly father to his children. So a man won't be able to understand what it means to, a good, to be a good father if he doesn't know his heavenly father. And this is where we needed to start. Uh, being a good father or, uh, is uh, a result of seeing and knowing and understanding who our heaven, heavenly Father is. In John chapter 20, verse 17, it says, um, this is uh, Jesus speaking, For I haven't yet ascended to the Father, but go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So because of Jesus' death and his resurrection on our behalf, we can know God not only as our creator, but also our heavenly father. He says here, I am ascending to my father, and this father of mine is also your father. And that's the way Jesus introduced and exhibited his father. Because who, who uh, for those of you who have seen me, he said, you have seen the father. So when you look at Jesus Christ, we can see exactly who the Father is. Well, so the greatest heritage a man can leave to his sons and daughters, tayo po mga tatay, ito po yung pinaka-greatest heritage na we can leave to our children. Actually, it's not money or wealth, and the po, uh, it's not possessions, but the greatest heritage that we can leave to our children is our faith. Ito po yung pinaka-importante, yung pananampalataya po natin. So dads, Mga tatay po, we need to reflect to our 
uh, children who God is. Yun po, uh, uh, we are serving as a mirror no po? Uh, as we study and know our Heavenly Father is being reflected to us, to our children. So they get to know who our Heavenly Father is if we, once we get to know Him. Po, kapag nakikita po nila through our example. So we are supposed to represent God to our children. Praise God. Represent God to our children. Represent our Heavenly Father to our children. And you know what? A, lo um, a good father not only has to know God and represents God to his children, but also loves the mother of his children. A good, good father. This is the second most important uh, thing a man can do for his children is to love their mother. Alam po ninyo tayo mga tatay, we buy a lot of things to our children, especially tayo pong nandito sa Canada, and which we haven't experienced when we were young, or our parents buying us gifts, no po, that our children are having or experiencing, receiving right now. So we buy gifts for them. But what children actually needed the most is to see their fathers love their mothers. Gifts are good. But kailangan po makita ng mga anak natin kung paano po natin minamahal or pinapakita yung pagmamahal natin sa ating asawa, sa kanilang mga nanay na po. So what, the question is, what are we modeling for our children about what it means to be a husband? Ano po nakikita po nila? Palagi po bang inaaway natin? Minamaliit, no po? Dinodominahan? Wala pong understanding? We're not do dwelling with them with knowledge? No po? There's no respect? Oh, things like that. So, ano po bang nakikita ng mga anak natin? The way we treat our wife. No? Because children observe the way we treat our wife much more than we know. And you think they are not paying attention, they are not looking, no po? They are, I mean, uh, palagi pong nakatingin niyan, di man yung mga mata, yung mga tenga po nila. Okay? So, they often lose respect on their father if they don't see him giving love she deserves kapag sinasaktan po natin sila abusing them either physically or verbally no po so um uh, hindi po nakakatulong yun it's very hard for our children uh to really uh kind of love us back and respect us as dad no po so when we love the mother of our children what we do as a, as dads is we bring peace and happiness in our homes. And we teach our children by example of what it means to be a real man. Because being a real man is not just having kids or having to produce kids. But, but a real man is someone who loves the mother of his children. Okay, I know, mahal po ninyo yung mga asawa ninyo. And meron po tayo mga ups and downs. And dads, you and I, we are trying our best with the help of, by the grace of God how we can be a good husband to our wives, our wives. So we need to love, our, uh, love the mother of our children, okay, in order to be a good, good father. Okay, and number three, we need to love our children. To be a good father, love our children. Well, Pastor, uh, well, mahal naman natin yung mga. Sino ba naman yung magulang o tatay na hindi nagmamahal sa mga anak? I know, ma mabili, mabilis, madaling sabihin, pero kung minsan napakahirap, uh, and we think we are living it, or showing it, not until na po, na talagang, uh, we, we think about the way we live our life, the way we love our children, and we get to evaluate and, uh, ano po, and have some time, thinking time na po to ourselves. And then we realize, no, many times, hindi ko na ipapakita yung pagmamahal ko sa mga anak ko. No? Okay, so as dads, we need to love our children. I know in your heart, you love your kids, especially if you are a believer. But you have the God kind of love. And as much as possible, you're trying as much as possible in how, you sh how to show your love to your children. And sometimes you are inspired of your frustration, uh, disappointments, and sometimes you feel like giving up. Uh, but still within you, it's telling you, just keep loving, showing love to your kids. So many parents think love means just providing for their children. Yung mga basic necessities po nila, like food, yung, yung clothing, uh, having a roof on top of their head. Po. 
But love, it's much more than, than stuff that we are giving to our kids. But love is not actually buying gifts. Love is you being a gift, me being a gift to our children. Ito po yung pinakamatinding uh, pakahulugan po ng pag-ibig. Okay? Now, we, 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 we buy them basketball, I mean a, a ball, a bike, but we don't have time to ride bikes with them. We buy them basketball, basketball court, uh, build a nice uh, basketball court in our backyard. We don't have time to play ball with them, okay? Or, or any type of sports, na po, things like that. And yung mga ibang dads na no, medyo palaging wala sa, dahil sa trabaho po nila, the kind of job you have. And you just, just send the money, they have to go here, and they have to buy this, na po. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Wala pong masama dyan. But if we cannot give our time, to be with them and be able to enjoy the things that we're providing with their dad, po, hindi po, I think partly lang po na ipapakita natin, yun talagang pinakakailangan nila, hindi nila nare-receive. Especially sa mga dad na super busy. No po? Hindi yung, uh, I know financial support is very important, other stuff that we're providing. But the greatest gift if you is you being with them. No po? John 3.16, ito po yung, Pambihirang pinakita ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Na po. For this is how God loved the world. He gave His only one and Son, or His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So our God the Father, not only that, you know, actually He didn't give us a gift. Na po. He gave us Himself, because Jesus and the Father are one. So when he said, I love you, I love the word so much that I gave my only son, what he's saying, I gave myself by becoming a son, by becoming a human being. He gave himself. Hindi lang po niya sinabi na mahal niya tayo, he knows our needs. He lived as a human being, born of a virgin. And, and he experienced everything that a human being has to suffer. Well, why that? Because that's how much... God loves us. He took time to do that. He needed to start as a baby. The time of conception, uh, Mary has to be pregnant with the Holy Ghost. He could have come, came here at uh, 30 years of age or started this ministry right away. But why God the Father becoming a son and go to the process of how a human being has to start here on earth? Why? I think makikita po natin yung kakompletohan po ng pag talaga ng Panginoon. Hindi po niya si shortcut. Na kumisa si no shortcut natin, okay, para lang uh, yung anak natin umokay, uh, bibigyan na. Sometimes we, we tend to bribe or, or buy the love of our children respect with stuff. Diba? Uh, or their obedience with stuff. We give them this, then, then we are thinking that by giving them stuff, they will obey us. Pero hindi po ganon. And I, that's the wrong way that we need to uh, earn the respect. Okay? It is by us loving, by giving ourselves to our children. Medyo mabigat po to. Okay? Lahat po tayo mga dads, uh, we struggle in this area, no po, but we thank God we have a heavenly, uh, heavenly Father living within us as we grow in the Word of God. No po, and po naranasan natin how to walk in the Spirit okay? and being a good dad to our children. So to be... Um, uh, to, to, to be uh, a loving father to our children, if we truly love our children, we must be responsible to our children. Okay? Parents have this awesome responsibility before God to raising their children. God does not leave the care and upbringing of our children to themselves in a daycare or the society, in our society. In the po. He leaves it to us. Ito po yung responsibility natin, mga tatay. So how much time do we spend with our children? And I know ito pong time natin ngayon, masyado pong uh, busy yung mga parents. Po? Having to work uh, many hours a day, 40 or more hours a week. Marami pong, marami tayong tinatamaas sa mga blessing. Pero nakita po ninyo ka-hectic. Uh, yung iba po parang mas lalo po naging hectic, maging busy, naging busy yung life natin nila during pandemic. Na po? So, kumisan talaga hindi mo maunawaan. With or without pandemic, busy. Yung mga dads. Ay, ako ko kung totoo ang sinasabi nila, na busy sila. Na po. Uh, but, uh, I think siguro ang Panginoon, hindi rin niya maunawaan. No? 
<laughs> yung klase ng busyness meron po tayo as parents. But, uh, but I believe we are busy. Na po, raising our kids, providing the things that our children need. No? So, isa po sa mga responsibility natin yon as dads. Okay? We need to be responsible for our children. Iniwan po niya sa atin to, yon. But we need to spend time with them. That's being responsible. So the question is, who is really bringing up our kids? Marami po tayong kalaban ngayon, mga dads. Kalaban natin yung gadget. Yung mga friends. At least ngayon, medyo awas po, no? Unless they're, uh, I know, they don't, they're not being together physically, but I think uh, for some, which is, at least, walang kont, I mean, yung iba naiwasan, but still, they are still connected. I believe, I believe there are, maybe their friends are the one raising them still, uh, or ano man yung mga pinag, uh, sa social media, and they spend lang, lang time na po, that's the one raising them, or others, is, is the, move, uh, the things that they're watching on the movies or TV program. And that's who is raising or is bringing up our kids? Daycare, daycare center, babysitter, mga friends, kumpare, kumare. Are we the one bringing up our kids? Huh? To be responsible to our children, we must make the time for them. Kasi ako walang time, how can we show ourselves being responsible? Uh, responsible no? uh, because our kids, hindi po sila parang item na ini-include natin sa to-do list natin. Okay. <laughs> Many fathers don't really want to take responsibility because children take time and energy and effort. Uh, depende po kung ilan yung mga anak ninyo. Okay? So therefore, they leave them, uh, their children to fend for themselves. So the problem is, uh, later on, makikita po natin effect the way that our kids will grow up. I tell you when they are young, uh, you can see as if you, the only problem you have right now that you're facing is changing their diapers, na po, uh, uh, kailangan po nilang kumain pag umiyak sila or anything kapag may sakit sila, ganito. I tell you, and that's why very important yung mga uh, uh, formative years nila, that's when you really bugbogan po ninyo salita ng Diyos. That's when best time to disciple. Don't ever think that you have a lot of time. Ngayon po, one year old, two years old na yung anak ninyo. Diba? Kailan lang baby. Um, kasi you, they have all your attention during the formative years because they don't have a lot of choices. Pero kapag nag-teenagers na po yan, of course they have a lot of choices. Yun, yun po yung normal flow ng life, no? yung growth. So they can choose not to listen to everything you say. Okay? And, and you cannot force them to do that later on. So, kaya yung mga first few years po ng life nila, doon na bugbogan yan. Yung mga anak po natin. Okay. I have four kids, and my youngest is 12, 12 years old. So, I'm learning, still learning. Okay. And it was really uh, fast, na po, the way yung spark po ng growth ng mga bata. Nagulat din po kayo sa mga anak ninyo during pandemic, only in over a year. Iba, Parang in-stress na gusto yung mga anak ninyo, no? Lumaki. Kasi kain ng kain lang, ha? Nasa ano, bahay, di ba? Lumaki na yung uh, puberty, ano nila, years nila. Ano po, kapag nakita tayo, magkakagulatan po tayo, for sure, sa mga anak natin. No? Uh, whenever I get to see or time to have a video call dun sa mga kapatiran, no po, uh, I always request now, well, can I see your son or your daughter? No, I wanted to see how they look like now. Kasi ang dami na pong changes. Ngayon, may makeup na, may lipstick na. Dati, they didn't care about that. No? Yung looks nila ngayon, mga dalaga na, binata na. No? Usually, mga girls, nauuna po yan. Eh. Yung mga boys, ah, they don't care about their appearance. Kapag ganun mga, mga 11, 12, 13, yung mga girls, medyo ano na po yan. Uh, kikita mo na nagme-makeup on things like that. See? Ganun po kabilis. No? So dads, uh, we need to learn how to balance no po, yung pong uh, life demands. It can be dif difficult sight sometimes being a father, balancing po itong demand ng life. No? But our children should be at the top of the list no po, after our wife. Okay, mabilis pong lumipas yung panahon. If we truly our, love our children, we must be responsible to them. And we must teach and instruct our children. 
Okay, hindi po yung time lang ng, yun, hindi lang yung sermon time. <laughs> ayaw nyo rin yun. Ayaw nyo rin yun ng mga bata kayo. Ayaw natin yun, no? Yung instruction na po kapag may kinawa lang tayong hindi maganda o hindi na nagustuhan. A father need to read and study the Word of God so he can teach this to his children. He must know the commands of God. As in other words, you need to grow. You need to search the scriptures. You need to grow in your walk with God. No, po? It, it is impossible to teach something you haven't learned yourself. You cannot share about the love of God, the grace of God, repentance, about the authority you have. If you yourself never learn about that, no, you've been a Christian for so many years. Okay? Uh, remember what God said about Abraham? whom he called his friend in Genesis 18, it says, For Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Then I will do for Abraham all that I have promise so god made a promise to abraham and said the fulfillment of the promises was connected to abraham's teaching his family the word of god so dun po nagfo-flow yung blessings yung success na po uh, with that uh, na po having to learn in principles of the word of god having learned the word of god and imparting that to his family na po in the book of proverbs chapter 2 verse 1 to 6 and then uh, Solomon spoke to, of the wisdom to be, um, to be gained from godly instructions. Sabi po rito, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then... After doing this, you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth comes come knowledge and understanding. So when, when we fathers, when we dads, tayo po mga tatay, na po, teach our children the commands of God, our children will learn the father, or, I mean, will learn that fathers who knows the word are worth listening to. Mga dads, kailangan po tayong bumaling sa salita ng Diyos. Hindi po kailangan magkaroon tayo ng maraming mga scripture memory. Po. But we need, to, we need to search the will of God from the word of God. Okay. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, My child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. Po. That's why it was called the book of wisdom. No? What you learn from them will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. Do you want to be crowned with grace? Uh, in other version, they call it a, a wreath. It will be a wreath over your, your, your neck. A garland. So a garland was a crown of wreath given to athletes who won a race. So when children receive God the instruction from their fathers, they receive or they can win the race that ends in eternal life. Uh -huh. So if we truly uh, love our children, dads, then we must train and discipline our children. Napag-usapan po natin to previous Sundays na po. Hosea 11, 3 and 4, it says, I myself taught Israel how to walk, leading him along by the hand, but he doesn't know or even care that I or that it was I who took care of him. In verse 4, I led Israel along with my robes of kindness and love. I lifted the yoke from his neck, and I myself stooped to feed him. Wow, ito po ang Heavenly Father natin. And this is what, what God did to, to his uh, people, the children of Israel, and how he took care of them when they were uh, still uh, young as a nation. And how he cared for them. He's always thinking about them. Yung thoughts niya sa buying Israel, the po. And, and this is really a good scripture, Nepal. He led them along the way by his hand. Uh, he cared for them, took care of them. Wow. He showed them his kindness and his love. And he fed them 
So that's the spirit of a father. Our Heavenly Father takes a personal interest in our training or in training our children or in our training. Likewise, we are to personally train our children. In Proverbs 19:18, and I have my scriptures, Dito, discipline your children while there is hope, otherwise you will ruin their lives. Mabagsik po yung verse na to. This verse is saying, discipline and train a child, a child now because there is hope in, in disciplining them or there is hope in training them. Now, until it's too late, we are giving hope to our children when we discipline and correct them. The scripture says, if you don't do this, you are a part or becoming a part of ruining their life when you fail to discipline them. Maski hindi ka po nakagawa ng crime, kung inassist mo yung gumawa ng crime, kaparte po kayo ng, ng crime. So, yun po yung nakukamit ng maraming dads ngayon. No? Because of failing to train and discipline or disciple our children. Proverbs 29.15, To discipline a child produces wisdom, but a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. Tingnan po ninyo yung mga inmates sa prisons. Na po. Yung mga maraming nakatira sa lansangan. Na po. Many of them were left to themselves as children with no one to teach them. No one taught them about character and values. Kaya they end up in prisons. They end up in gangs. They end up in drugs and alcohol. Na po. Wala pong direction. Wala pong future. Uh, yung buhay po nila. Proverbs 22 verse 6 Direct your children onto the right path. So we need to know the right path. God's path, na po, as dads. And when they are older, they will not live it. Or train your children the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. So if we truly our, uh, love our children, I know we do, we must encourage them, we must comfort them, we must warn them. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 11, 12, and you know that we treated each of you as a father treats his own children. And you know, Paul was talking here, Apostle Paul, talking to the believers. No? We treated each of you as a father treats his own children. We pleaded with you, encouraged you, and urged you to live your lives in a way that God would consider worthy, for he called you to share in his kingdom and glory. So ito pong passages, ito pong passages of scriptures na to, it gives us free additional responsibilities, responsibilities of a good father. Encouraging, comforting, and warning our children. Dads, we need to encourage our children, not criticize them. If they're trying for the first time things that we are asking them to do, uh, don't look on, on the mistakes. Na po, but, but be thankful and encourage them, but they were, but they that they are trying to do what, they're, uh, what we're asking them to do. And I know it's very tempting to, eat, to correct them right away for not doing it the right way. I tell you, like for, for uh, sweeping the floor, or mowing the, uh, the lawn, the pole, or washing the dishes. And sometimes we're expecting them to do it, everything well, perfectly the first time. <laughs> and it's, so, it's so tempting to, to kind of correct them, Lord, if we, if we saw na po, na the, the, the plates are not rinsed properly. And for dads or parents, very tempting to watch their children while, while they bake or first time to attempt, uh, I mean, their attempt for the first time to cook. <laughs> okay, mga experts po tayo, di ba? Wow. So we criticize them. Okay, well, okay. That's not supposed how you're supposed to do it. No, this is how you well some of you you've been doing it for years and still you, you can do it really well. magugas ng plato. No, we we need to be an encourager to our children. Uh, uh, you know, you can simply tell them, well, thank you for washing the dishes. Wow, galing mo naman maghugas ng plato. Wow. Sana ganun ako nung nagsimula ako. But they need a lot of encouragement. Okay? Because nowadays, uh, people are, a lot of people are very critical. But they, we, we easily look at our mistakes. What we're not doing right. Uh, may mga parents na ganun. Wala nang ginawang tama yung anak po nila. Although they are trying 
to do their best. Na po? Um, kapag nagkaroon po ng tuwan-tuwa, I mean, a kid will go home and report to their parents, uh, Mom, Dad, I got a B on my mark. And then parents are disappointed because they're expecting an A. If they got an A, they want A+. plus. Ano po? Nung kami po, 75. Yun po yung passing eh. Kasi 74, bagsak ka na eh. No? Nung 75, I don't know kung tuwan-tuwa mo, parents ko, 75. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to be actually uh, happy in the, in the exciting. But, but if you're struggling in academics, uh, alos nakapasa ka, I think you need a lot of encouragement, di ba? I mean, you study really hard, and maybe hindi po yun talagang, li I mean, nahihirapan kayo, no? But then you need some encouragement. Hindi yung, anak ko naman, but hindi ka nagmana sa tatay mo? Or you would say, but ka nagmana sa tatay mo? No? Tamang-tama ka lang nakapasa. <laughs> Tapang nagmana ka sa nanay mo. Oh... I tell you, um, parents uh, uh, used to remember when you were young. But you tried to do things for the first time. And how did your parents uh, uh, deal with that? No, po, yung mga imperfections. Okay. Did they encourage you or criticize you? Did they focus more on your mistakes, try to correct you? Hindi po nakakatulong. I think if we received more encouragement, we could have uh, uh, did more or... Uh, achieve more, diba? went further in life. Okay? So encourage your children, whether in school, uh, at work, when there seems to be discouraged. Diba? And we need to uh, encourage them, we need to comfort them. Diba? You encourage them when they are doing something positive and when you want them to improve in something, but there will be times when they become discouraged, they are hurt, they are confused, disillusioned, disappointed. This is when they needed comfort. So how do we need to do that? By letting know that they are loved even when they make mistakes and they don't live up to our expectations. We, by listening to their struggles and problems with kindness and understanding, giving them warm embraces and loving words, when they are sad. To be a comforter, you have to be accessible to your children. You have to listen and know what is going on. Uh, it's tempting to always talk, but we need to learn how to listen. Your comfort will help them to know that their Heavenly Father is a comforter, just as He is described in the Word of God. Now, it says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is merciful, Father, and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. So a good father not only comforts his children, encourages his children, he also warns his children. He warns them to live righteously. We're not threatening their children. We're not mentioning hell the boy, if they're doing this and not if they didn't follow us or honor or respect us. You know, this is where you will end up, in the lake of fire and brimstone. Now, we don't threaten them. We warn them. It says in 1 Thessalonians 2, 12, Paul said, We pleaded with you, encouraged you, and urged you to live your lives in a way that God would consider worthy, for he has called you to share in his kingdom and glory. So it is our responsibility, dads, to warn our children of the consequences of not living in a way that God wants them to live of not walking in the Spirit, of not accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? of not trusting the Lord Jesus Christ and trusting in their own, um, in their own uh, sufficiency, in their own strength. Okay? So it is our responsibility to warn our children with love. We don't threaten them. If we love our children, we must not provoke our children not exasperate them. We also talk about this uh, previous Sundays, Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. You know, we have a way of provoking our children by impatience or harshness. And you know what? Provocation can also mean neglect can also mean neglect. When we neglect our children, we incite them to despise us. 
Sometimes we are not sensitive to their needs, so they become exasperated and they are provoked because of our insensitivity. They end up with inferiority complex and underdeveloped or undeveloped personalities. And because we didn't show them the love and the kindness of God. You know, that's another way we provoke and exasperate our children. And the last one, you know, if you want to be a good father, this is your responsibility. A godly father leaves a strong legacy for his children. So what can we leave to our children? Ano po bang iniisip niyong iwanan sa mga anak ninyo? I know you're thinking about your car, your house, your bike. Ano po? Ano mang toys meron kayo, mga dads? Your wealth? No? Or yung isang plot of land sa Glen Eden? <laughs> okay. You're thinking of giving them a good house, no po? I mean, a nice house. Well, giving them a house doesn't mean that you are leaving them a home. Huh? Leaving them a lot, a lot of stuff doesn't mean leaving them something really important. In Proverbs 17, verse 6, it says, Grandchildren are the crown and glory of the aged parents. Or, or of the aged na po. Grandchildren are the crowning glory of the aged. Uh, hindi pa ako grandparent. Soon and very soon na po. In a few years. Parents are the pride of their children. Parents are the pride of their children. So that is the greatest thing a father could hear his children. I mean the greatest thing a father could hear his children say is, Yun ang tatay ko. That's my father. That's my daddy, and I'm so proud of him. He's the best father. He's my hero. I like uh, when, I, uh, when I drive by the parking of Springs uh, to where the office is. Before you get to the office, there are these uh, posters about dads, coats. Uh, it was really a good idea because I should be driving by and a few words, and by the time I get to the office, upon the church, and upon encourage them to some more words. They are not being a dad is the That was really good. No, wow. I just don't remember the quotes now, but but they were really really good one. The uh, If you are discouraged as a dad, or just having to see and read those, three of those or four of those, I mean, encourage you na kana by the time na makarating sa so for me, it really ministers a lot. Okay. So that's the greatest thing a father could uh, hear from their children. Oh, that's my daddy. I'm so proud of him. He's my hero. So will our children be able to say that to us? Huh? That they're so proud of us? Or I just want to become like my dad. Huh? I want to become like my dad. Actually, whether they like it or not, uh, they kind of look like their dad and behave like their dad. Diba? Nandiyan na po sa gene nila yan eh. It'll be way much more better if they become the dad, I mean, the, their heavenly father. Na de demonstrate natin sa kanila. Na who our heavenly father is. I think that's much more powerful na po. When our children want to become like us, they want it to be Come like God, like Him, uh, whom we represent. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. This is our last scripture. It says, imitate God, Paul said. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are His dear children. That's why we get to know who our Heavenly Father is from His Word, and we get to tell our children who He is. If we have His Word in our hearts, we cannot impart or share to them what we don't have. So by imitating God, His ways, and we can see that in the life of Jesus, who have seen me, have seen the Father, how He's compassionate, loving, so gracious. No? Then as we get to know Him for who He is, yun po yung maishishare natin no? sa ating mga anak. Not the kind of... Uh, parenting the way our parents did. But it's 
the parenting that the Bible is telling us, the way parenting has to be done, or the way being a father has to be done. And it's good, no, well, we admire our dad, the way we were raised up, the way they disciplined us, the way they became a role model. But we wanted to focus on becoming a good father based on the Word of God. Someone who's a godly father, knowing who his heavenly father is. Ito po yung pinakamahalaga sa lahat. So imitate God, therefore in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Dads, kayo po mga, hopefully kasama po namin kayo ngayon, nakikinig kayo, nanonood. As you imitate, as we imitate our heavenly father, our children will imitate us and reflect the character and life of their creator. But you may not see that right away, and for some, you are seeing it. But if you are constant, consistent in living that way, and you, won't, and you don't give up, later on, makikita po ninyo yung result nun. Okay? So that's what the dominion assignment of fatherhood is all about. And that, that's how we can love our children. By knowing, knowing our Heavenly Father, and represent Him to our children by loving their mother and by loving our kids. Those are our responsibilities as dads. Parang ang daming list, no? Okay? Pastor, apakarami naman yan. So, what we need to focus on, tayo po mga tatay, is our relationship with God. Okay? We don't, don't try it on your own. You will be disappointed. You will be frustrated. God is not telling us to try it on our own. No, just focus on growing. Focus on growing and loving the Lord and the scriptures. And then that growth will just flow out of you and becoming a father as well. And remember, dads, you already have the love of God within you. And I'm talking about the God kind of love, the agape love. So na naihinder lang po yon. Because of our immaturity, we fail to grow. We are not looking after that area of life. Natin. But probably you, you notice yourself, whenever you focus in your relationship with God, you will see the difference in how you treat your children. But when you neglect that, you treat your children exactly the way you were treated or the way you were raised by your parents. But now, since you are a believer, dito po ang gustong gawin ng Panginoon sa bawat isa sa atin. It has to be based on the Word of God, not provoking your children. You have to train them in ano uh, the admonition of the Lord. We need to do it God's way, not our parents' way, but God's way. I'm not saying their, their ways are bad, ano po? No, but it has to be God's way if you are a believer. Now, for those of you who, who felt like you know, giving up because uh, being a dad no po, nowadays, there are a lot of challenges. Well, well there is still hope. Okay? You, you, you're not going to do it on your own. On your, no po, you, God is with you. God is going to enable you. And He will empower you. So as you search the scriptures upon hearing this, no po, so don't, don't be discouraged. Okay? We're not trying to perfect everything. Don't be discouraged. Just do it one step at a time, day at a time, and trust God as you apply the Word of God in parenting, in loving your children of God. Don't focus on your mistakes. Just keep moving forward. Okay? And what you do, what we do for our children is not wasted. Later on na po, kasi natatakaw na po sa puso nila yan, nandiyan na sa heart nila. Makikita po natin kung ano yung bent nila, yung calling nila. Since we've trained them, we needn't neglect them, makikita po natin yung result noon. Okay? So, if I were you, don't be discouraged. I encourage you to keep on keeping on. You are a good father. And for those of you somehow neglected your time with God, yung Christian life ninyo, you walk with God, na po, bumalik kayo doon. Okay? 
God is not condemning you. He's not writing you off. He loves you, and he knows what it means to be a father. Okay? He saw that. Jesus saw that on his earthly father, Joseph. Yeah, he knows it's not easy. I tell you, although the scriptures doesn't say a lot, much about Joseph being a dad while Jesus was growing up. But I can assure you, Nepal, Jesus, had, he saw a lot from Joseph. That being a dad, earthly father, is not really that easy. Yeah. I wish we had that recorded, Nepal, while Jesus was growing up. But, uh, you know, po, hindi po niloob na may sulat din sa Bible yon. Okay, just a little bit part of here and there. But I think the Word of God we have right now, a lot of scriptures is enough for us to become the kind of father that God wants us to be. So that, for those of you who are listening or might be listening later on, po, again, I encourage you, if, if, you, if you are discouraged or stopped, po, and medyo napagod po kayo, no, get right back po, to it. And just keep moving forward. Important po, you have to trust God, rely on God. Okay, not your emotion, not what you see. But uh, stick to what you know is right, and, and what is right is the Word of God. Okay, so today I would like to pray for you dads. We all struggle. We love our children, and that's why you're working. Even when you're sick, you're not feeling well, you do everything that you wanted to do for your kids. So that's we salute you. You are, you are very important. God loves you, and he values you. And um, you know what you're doing, what you have done to your children uh, is not uh, wasted. And just encourage you to keep doing what you know the Word of God is telling you to do. Okay? I would like you to bow your heads, join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can call upon you. We can call you Abba, Father. No one or nothing, no earthly father can be compared to you. And we got to know you, get a little bit uh, of who you are, known a little bit of who you are through Jesus Christ when he came here on earth. He showed to us who you are, that you are a loving, compassionate, gracious, faithful, awesome, amazing Father. Lord, we thank you because we came to have a relationship with you. We were reconciled to you through Jesus Christ. We thank you that you are not angry with us anymore. You put all your anger and your wrath upon Jesus when he died on the cross. And that's how much you loved us. You sent, your, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, because you love the world so much. You gave yourself to us. Lord, we appreciate everything that you have done. Apart from you, Lord, we don't have any purpose. We can't be a good father, a godly father. We cannot raise our kids, Lord, apart from you. But we thank you, God, that you have given us your word. You have instructed us. You have given us this manual and how we can be a father that you wanted us to be to our children. How we can parent our, our children, Lord Jesus. Especially nowadays during these challenging times, Lord. So God, we trust in you. Help us in our weaknesses. And, I, and you know all the dads right now, what they're going through. God, their struggles, the challenges, Lord, that they're facing right now. And I know, Lord, they're trying their best. And, God, they're relying on you. And there are times that they are down. There are, the, there are times that they don't know what to do, Lord. But you're the one supplying them with wisdom. You're the one encouraging them. You're the one lifting them up, Lord God. And I pray that they will keep relying on you, turning toward you, Lord, when they are discouraged and frustrated and disappointed, Lord as dads, as fathers, when they feel like they are not 
uh, doing what our fathers should uh, should have been doing. Lord, uh, that they're not going to be hard on themselves, but uh, rather, God, uh, just learn how to overlook, Father, any mistakes, anything that they have done wrong in the past. And I pray that they will keep starting over again. And God, draw nourishment from you, from your word, drawing strength from you, God, from the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm praying that you will empower each and every dad right now. I pray that they will rise up, Lord God. I pray that you will turn the hearts of the fathers toward their children, Lord, in these last days. Because we don't want to see our children, Father, not having a purpose, a direction, God, ending up in, and ending up or ending up with God in, in the wrong path or in, the, in prison, oh God, in the streets. Father, we wanted, to, we wanted to see our children living the dream that you have for them. So use us, Lord. We wanted to become better dads, good father to our children. We want to exhibit this love that you have put within us to our family, to our sons and daughters. And God, empower us to continually become example, Lord. Thank you, God. In spite of our weaknesses, Lord God, you're still using us. You have given us this incredible and awesome privilege to become a father. God, I'm praying for those fathers right now who are so down and maybe blaming themselves and because what their children ended up right now know that, that Lord they're, uh, they are probably in drugs or they ended up in the wrong in the wrong crowd Father they're not living the way they're supposed to live in a way you want them to live Lord I'm praying for those dads who think that they are a failure Lord I pray that they will be encouraged Touch them right now, Lord Jesus. I pray that they would rise up, oh God. And they are still a hero, Father. He wanted to use them. It's not too late, Lord, for every dad who are down and disappointed and discouraged and depressed right now. I pray that they will listen to your voice. I speak life to every dad. I speak, that, Lord, that... Uh, that they will be revived right now in the name of Jesus and completely rely on you. Lord, I pray that they will turn to your word. I pray that they will look after their spiritual life, their prayer life, their time with you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for giving their best. Thank you for working really hard. Thank you for providing for their kids, for their children, for their family, Lord Jesus. Lord, I'm praying and speaking divine health upon each of them every day, Lord. And for those who are sick, and I pray, Lord, that their bodies will be restored to health in the name of Jesus. Provide them wisdom, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for imparting to us your word, Lord, this morning. And as everyone, every family celebrate Father's Day today, Thank you, Lord. You will be with them. And I speak blessing upon every household as they celebrate Father's Day. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name this we pray. Amen and amen. Well, good afternoon, po, everyone. Again, happy Father's Day. And make, you, make sure, po, uh, those who are F, uh, FOC fathers, stay in your home. Don't go anywhere. No, po. There's some, something will be delivered to your home. And again, we appreciate you. You guys are the best. Okay, enjoy the gifts you have from your family, from your children. Enjoy the new car, the new bike, the new tools, and <laughs> the new shoes, whatever new uh, that they've given you. God bless you, dads. Happy Father's Day. See you again next uh, Sunday.